the next case to come before the court is Louis Jacuzzi v. Tim Z. Mack. Um, each party will have up to 15 minutes to present their arguments. The appellate will, uh, may reserve up to five minutes for rebuttal. And if you do plan to reserve time, if you'll let me know uh, how much time you're reserving, I will, I will try to keep track of the time for you. Um, the arguments are being recorded. Please keep your voices up, remain behind the uh, podium, introduce yourselves. You should not use the names of children or minors or victims. Should that be relevant to your arguments, you can refer to those folks by initials uh, or general terms. After the, uh, uh, you know, I guess at this point I would ask the appellant, uh, would you like to reserve time for rebuttal? Yes. Okay, and how much time would you like? Okay, very well, then you may proceed up to the podium when you are ready. Good morning, honorable judges. Let me start by, allow me to start by giving a brief history and motivation of the appellee plaintiffs joining the HOA board and the unaccountable way he ran the board. I, I can't okay. hear you very well, I'm sorry. Speak up. Yes, okay. please speak up and also um, make sure that whatever you're referencing, it's something that we're going to be able to see in the record because that's all we're going to be able to look at on review. So, okay. okay just And Mr. Um, Conway, if you would like to come maybe to the side, maybe you would be able to hear from the front better than where you are. Uh, if I need to, I will judge. Okay, very Thank well. You, you may you. proceed. We're, we're going to give you some time back. <laughs> does the five minutes take away from the 15 minutes? It does. So at about 10 minutes, I'm going to let you know if you're you're going into your rebuttal time. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. First, I have to apologize for my English. is my third language. <laughs> so I have to apologize for if I don't speak like an, an average Ohio. <laughs> no apology necessary. I can barely speak one language, let alone three, so. <laughs> Thank you. So first let me start by giving a brief history and motivation of the appellee, uh, the plaintiffs joining the HOA Homeowners Association Board of Trustees, and the unaccountable way he ran the board later after he joined. So the appellee shared that his wife and Brunswick city manager encouraged him to run for city council. That the city manager told him that they needed more friendly, could, could needed more friendly council member in the council. So the way Apelli joined at the board was beyond ordinary and portended what was to come in the ensuing years. Without having previously served on the board, he walked into a board meeting and told the board he wanted to be the new president of the board, and that an accountant friend of his could be the new and, treasurer. And, and I just want to make sure, when we go and look at the record for this appeal, are we going to find all of that in the record? Because if we're not, we, we aren't going to really be able to consider it. I, I'm not aware if my previous counsel has filed that in the court system. Because I gave her all this information, I am not Hundred percent sure if she had filed it in evidence. Okay. What was there? Let me follow up. Yes, here. Was there any type of hearing at the trial court level? Yes. Okay. Were you put under oath? Hearing like this, no. Okay. Was there what we call an evidentiary hearing? Were you actually sworn in to testify? I believe she may or may not have filed this under the law. The law is, I think they filed us eight hundred pages of stuff. We filed maybe hundred pages or so. I don't know if this is included or not. So I just want to uh, briefly spend a few minutes to give the motivation what happened uh, after that, that led to this situation. If it pleases the court. Thank you. So the treasurer, the new treasurer, didn't even bother to come to the meeting. So after they joined, the appellee has joined the board and became the president right away without having previously served. The telling and his spouse broke multiple law bylaws of the Board of Trustees of the HOA. I'm sticking to my notes because of my English. If I speak freely, freehand, I may sound somewhat foreign. <laughs> <laughs> a 
after many residents raised concerns about the transparency and accountability of how a Lee ran the HOA, his wife would attend board meetings without notifying the board in advance, as the bylaws required, and effectively led the board meetings in strategizing how to counter-attack dissenting views in the upcoming annual meeting. And then at the annual meeting, where residents were revolting against the way he ran, uh, the Pelly ran the, the HOA, the Pelly's wife placed herself at the front of the meeting right from the beginning and led the meeting in answering many questions from the residents who directed the questions to the board. Uh, by the way, the, the Pelly's spouse, the wife, was not in any way serving on the board. And then uh, in the ensuing years, the way he ran the, the board raised a lot of red flags, and I started questioning, asking for, for, for things to prove otherwise. One of the things is the Staples ran a promotion of free printing for businesses at a certain period, and coincidentally during that period, apparently, <coughs> Make a unusual by HOA standard because uh, it was none done before and after at that period. Make a print job and then claim reimbursement for that job without submitting a receipt. And the Yes Man board, the treasurer, approved the reimbursement without seeing the receipt. So I asked for the receipt. The Pelly panicked. Asked the lawyer, what is this? And did not supply the receipt for two years. Until his, two years later, a receipt, a copy of receipt was supplied with conflicting dates and conflicting amount. And it, it was not an official receipt where you got, after the transition started staples, the final receipt will show after the promotions have been supplied. So that, is potentially a criminal act in... Commissioner Mack, yes. all this went on, a lawsuit was filed, mm -hmm. and then at the trial court there was allegedly a settlement to resolve all of these matters and say, okay, we're finished and done with this. Um, tell me why you don't think you entered into a okay. settlement agreement. Okay. So they found the, the first case, and then with the intention of quelling of quieting all this dissent from the residents and from myself, especially who serve on the board, the only uh, independent direct, the independent board trust, trustee member on the board of trustees. So they know they knew they couldn't win the case, but they somehow coerced the two councils. The first council lied directly with court filings. The first council did not know that I recorded all the in-person meetings. Mr. Mack, did you present this to the trial court? Did you present? Did you present? Yeah, this I give it to my, 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 my attorney. Okay, yes. so this will be in the in the record. I hope so. Okay. I hope she found that. Yes. So he, the first attorney, filed the two court hearings. But the year first attorney. Year first attorney, and contained lies proven by my all my recording in person as well as telephone conversation, all recorded, because uh, he was a good friend of. Uh, Council, opposing council, and was related by marriage to the vice president who joined the board so that he can uh, have the board pay for his backyard problem. Another violation of the principle of accountability, using board funds to pay for a personal backyard problem. So, the settlement like agreement the trial court talks about enforcing. Mm -hmm. Did you sign that settlement agreement? I did not. Was, was there, there a hearing where that was read on the record and they said, Mr. Mack, do you agree with that? So, do you ever recall being in court where every, attorneys and people stood up and said, this is our agreement, Mr. Mack, do you agree with that? Did that, did that ever happen? In principle, yes. Okay. But then after Explain the, to me what happened then in principle. Explain to me what happened when you say that happened in okay, principle. Okay, so in the, the hearing... So the pre-trial hearing, I was expecting to go to the pre-trial, and then somehow my attorney said, this is a mediation instead of pre-trial. So after the 
after the, the hearing, after the mediation, on September 22nd, Ms. Schuster received a draft agreement from, his, from the opposing counsel, but did not inform me if this is how they coerced the, the, the first lawyer, I want to mention one thing, the, of the vice he mentioned, one is me, the defendant denied that the plaintiff was the president of the HOA. The first attorney found that I denied that he was the president of the HOA. <laughs> so I don't know. That, that lie he filed is to show me that I don't want to represent you. I am in his pocket, and I'm outright saying that. So after that, on September 22nd, 2022, Ms. Schuster, my second counsel, received a draft agreement from Ms. Ta Mr. Conway, but did not inform me until October 17th. I disagreed to the draft, requested a small addition. Ms. Schuster completely ignored my request and my lack of consent to the agreement. And did not reply to me in any way or form. And he, she sent her own draft version back to opposing counsel without my knowledge and consent. And then on November 14, Mr. Conway, opposing counsel, sent here his own version of the draft to Mr. Schuster. That which was essentially in disagreement with either my version or Mr. Schuster's own draft agreement. And then on December 6, 2022, Mr. Conway filed a motion to enforce. To enforce what? There was no agreement signed after I made a small request that if, my, if I needed to include my statement, that he needed to include statement of the wrongdoings of the criminal acts that the plaintiff had run the court, the, 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 had run the HOA board. And Mr. Mack, I want to let you know you're moving into your rebuttal time, so. Oh, my God. So you, you can either keep going or you can reserve your time. I'll, I'll reserve my time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mike Conway. I represent Lou DeCuzzi, the appellee in this case. This case is simply a matter of Mr. Mack making a settlement agreement, which he made on the morning of trial, and then he would not keep his word. The settlement agreement included an agreement to pay us $5,250, which quite frankly was a paltry sum we agreed to out of the fact that he agreed to sign a retraction and clean up my client's defamation that he committed against him, accusing my client of financial fraud when he was the HOA president. That was more important to us than the money. Opposing counsel Schuster is the one who created the final draft of the retraction. Can we go back? So I understand what happened on the record here was the day of trial, there was a settlement. Did the court bring the parties in and read the settlement on the record and have them agree on the record that they were adopting that settlement? I don't believe it was ever read into the record. The magistrate held the settlement conference, so it was the court only settlement conference. And the actual retraction was put into the judge's file. We had a motion to enforce hearing after opposing side reneged, and that motion was granted. Now Mr. Mack has filed an appeal, and in my opinion, he's just seeking to delay payment of the money. And was there an evidentiary hearing related to the granting of that motion? Yes, Your Honor, there was. And Mr. Mack did not show up. He appeared by telephone. And opposing counsel appeared late. And she had an opportunity to make every argument she wanted to. At the end of the day, the judge granted the motion to enforce settlement. Now Mr. Mack has filed an appeal. I've read his brief. It is very, quite frankly, bizarre. He is basically accusing his lawyer of legal malpractice as the basis for his appeal. 
and today in oral argument he's making some sort of trial case out. Those issues aren't reversible errors. His brief did not identify reversible error committed by the trial judge. There is no error assigned to Judge Kimler below. You cannot get reversible error without showing a prejudice against your side of the case committed by, in this case, the trial judge that shows that this court should reverse and remand for a new hearing. There is nothing identified in the appellant's brief that shows errors were committed that requires remand of this case for a new hearing. Matter of fact, I don't think he even requested one. He just wants a reversal. And, you know, I don't know what to tell him. The fact of the matter is when you file an appeal, you have to show us what the trial judge did wrong. And he hasn't done that. This is all about a beef he has with my client. However, that's not a basis for getting a reversal. And so I respectfully request that this court firm the trial court below and that this judgment be enforced. We have to collect on it. As far as, you know, the retraction, he was ordered to sign it. He refuses to do it. But at this point in time, there's so much time has passed, so much water under the bridge, we just want the money and want to be done with this case. This is not a giant case as far as cases go. Counsel, let me just ask you in regard to the evidentiary hearing on the motion to enforce, is that transcript in a record? It's my understanding that the appellant ordered it and filed it. However, because his brief didn't even identify it, I paid it no mind. If he's not going to argue with what the transcript says shows he's entitled to reversal, I'm not going to do it for him. I mean, he didn't even identify a place. He didn't show a single place in a transcript anywhere that says here's an error. The court should reverse the trial judge. I think the judge is very fair. She gave those guys an opportunity to say whatever they wanted. I mean, how can you argue with that? It could have said this agreement is not enforceable because, for example, there's no consideration. They could have said that we never made the deal at all. Or they could have said, you know, this somehow you changed the terms after we made the agreement. None of that stuff happened. The other side supplied all the terms. We said, okay. Matter of fact, they're the ones that drove down the settlement price through negotiating because we wanted that retraction at the time. So I respectfully request that this court firm Judge Kimbler's motion for settlement orders and that further justice be executed. If there are no more questions, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mack, you may have your five minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. The opposing counsel just lied in the fact. No. He said that. You can't use that kind of terminology here. Okay. The opposing counsel may have made a mistake. He said I was not at the meeting and my counsel was late. The fact is, and I attended through the teleconferencing. I attended that meeting. It is in the, this one is 100% sure it's in the documentation. I attended the meeting. My counsel was attending through the teleconferencing. So the judge, presiding judge, showed biases. At the first hearing pre-trial, she came into the courtroom. Before I give, after this I will give the reasoning. She came into the courtroom and smiled to the opposing counsel, the plaintiff, and my counsel. But when she saw me, she frowned. So after that I started thinking, must be some donations I made. Politicians, the biggest reason is people who give money to their opponents. So I searched, oh my goodness, a person ran against her and then she asked money from me. Sir, Mr. Mack, would you please stay close to the discussion of the legal issues involved here. And let's talk about the settlement agreement. Okay, was there a settlement agreement? It was fuzzy at that meeting. Was there an evidentiary hearing on this motion? Can you tell me a little bit about it? I don't believe there was an evidentiary meeting of that. 
on the enforcement of the settlement agreement? Yeah, um, the agreement can be enforced after you sign it. You know, after Is it your argument that there was no settlement agreement? Without the final details, no. I believe, I, I believe, I do not believe you can enforce an agreement that wasn't signed that both sides agreed to. Do you realize that the law does provide that you um, you can't just refuse to sign something after you agree to it, and that the court can actually uh, order the signature of the person if they feel there was uh, a settlement agreement that was entered into? Maybe you maybe that might be part of the the issue here. Yes, that's what it is. So after the hearing, we suggested a small minor change, but opposing counsel refused. So I would ask the court to dismiss the case so that their intention will not be served, which is to use court proceedings and intimidate the two counsels to silence dissent, so that this case can be can go back to trial, which was my original intention to go to trial to expose the plaintiff's wrongdoings running the HOA board. So this is just an attempt to silence dissent of the HOA of the way he ran the HOA board of trustees and the HOA in general. So I would hope that the, I pray that the court will send this case back to trial which never took place, and then they somehow, the opposing counsel have made the two attorneys, I was frivolous billings until it was eighty to $100,000 before going to trial. Okay, counsel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you both for your presentations. The court will take the matter under advisement and issue a decision in due course. The clerk of courts will mail a copy of the decision to you on the day that it is released. And it will also be posted on the Ohio uh, Supreme Court website. So thank you very thank much you. for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.